Hello and welcome to today's daily prayer with From and for St Catherine's. Thanks for joining me. We're working through the story of Peter. We looked a couple of weeks ago at Peter during the gospel years. Peter, while he was in training with Jesus as his trainer. And now his trainer's gone, he's out on his own and uh, he's got to work it out for himself. Yesterday's story, he follows Jesus' example. He sees uh, a man who is lame, a man who is begging, a man whose illness has pushed him right to the edge of society. And Peter reaches out to that man with God's healing love, just as Jesus had done. What happened next wasn't quite so Jesus-y. Peter then was accompanied by the man up onto the temple platform and gave a public address about what had happened. And that got him into trouble. That's what we're going to pick up on today. Poor old Peter is going to have a hard day. Let's say together our opening prayer. And so to our reading yesterday when we left the story, Peter was just at the very beginning of a public address explaining to the people that the healing of this lame man, this lame man who we discovered today was over 40 years old, that the healing of this man was an act of God. It wasn't an act of Peter, it was nothing to do with him being wonderful, it was to do with God being wonderful, and in particular it was to do with Jesus. Well, this is what happened next. While Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees, came to them much annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is resurrection from the dead. So they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day. The next day their rulers, elders, scribes assembled in Jerusalem and when they had made the prisoners stand in their midst they inquired by what power and by what name do you do this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit, a holy breath, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven among mortals by which we must be saved. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realised that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognised them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it's obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done amongst them. We can't deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them, ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go finding no way to punish them because of the people, for all of them praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. Part of the story which caught my imagination is a bit which is passed over very, very briefly. But at the time, there was nothing brief about it at all. It is Peter and John and an unnamed man in his 40s who has been lame all his life but is no longer lame, all in a prison cell together overnight. What a strange night that would have been. First time in prison for all of them, I suspect, or maybe not for the beggar, 
I guess tend to get treated badly, but but for the 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 man who's been healed, he's he, he's there. He was bouncing up and down yesterday, and now he's in a prison cell with these legs that now work. Thanks to God. What a what a strange night that would have been. Jesus had anticipated that his disciples were going to get in trouble with the authorities. Once they'd taken action against Jesus and Jesus had made sure they did take action against him, it was inevitable that they, they were going to do their best to suppress the teaching of Jesus and the teaching about Jesus. And that's exactly what's going on here. The, the Sadducees, the priests, didn't believe that there was such a thing as a resurrection. So they, they needed to squash this story of Jesus rising again. Jesus, in preparing his disciples for these kind of moments, had said to them, don't worry. It's going to happen, but don't worry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what you're going to say. You'll find yourself dragged up in front of the authorities, in front of people far more educated and important than you are. I didn't actually say that bit explicitly. I've just added that. Don't worry, because the breath of God, the Spirit of God, will give you the words to say, at the time when you need it. I'm hoping that as Peter and John sat in that present cell that night, that they reminded each other of that. God will give us the words. And what words Peter was given, what just simple, beautiful, elegant courage, very Jesus-like, actually, when he says, well, uh, what exactly am I accused of here? If, you, if, you, if, if you're wondering how, you know, if you're wondering about uh, an act of kindness, <laughs> to a sick man, well, yeah, this is God. And indeed, we see in the story, they can't answer it. They, they can see the evidence in front of them. God has indeed healed this man. They knew this man. He was outside the temple every day. I've been for years and years and years. Peter, it seems, got it right on this occasion. Peter had, had remembered Jesus's advice, and Jesus' advice is just, don't panic, go with it. It's like the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. God will give us what we need when we need it. He's not going to give us a forward stock. He's not going to give us a huge pile of toilet rolls to see us through the crisis. God is going to supply our needs as and when they're needed. And if we trust him, if we go with his wind and wait for his breath, good things will happen. Let's bring together those thoughts and prayers and reflections into the prayer that Jesus himself gave us, a prayer in which we look to God to provide today what we need for today. No more than that, just enough to get us through till this time tomorrow. That is how God provides. Let us open our hearts and our minds to that. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That brings us towards the end of our prayers for today. What a difference from the last time that Peter found himself in the high priest presence on that occasion. It was a servant girl who came and asked him if he was a follower of Jesus, and he said three times that he wasn't. But now, well, it was the main man asking him. Now he was stood on formal trial. He'd had time to think it and ponder it. But this time he stands up and he waits for God's breath to give him the words to say, and he says it. Let's follow his example. Let's follow Jesus' teaching. Join me in the prayer of the grace. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Always. Amen. Thanks to those who have been with me live and welcome to those who have picked this up further down the line. It's always a privilege to share with you. Thanks ever so much. Join us again.